the news finally came. Josh Agundale is transferring from the University of Iowa. More on that move in a moment. But a reminder, as always, please hit the subscribe button here at From the Hawkeye of the Storm. Hit the like button for this video as well. Lots of people watching videos need more likes, need more thumbs up. So please help me grow, help the channel grow. Of course, live programming throughout the offseason and throughout college basketball and college football right here from the Hawkeye of the Storm on YouTube. So the news on this Wednesday, we got news last night about Joe Toussaint. We got news prior to Joe's announcement about Keegan Murray declaring for the draft. We've got now three guys who have announced they're leaving in what, the last 16 hours, maybe a little bit more than that, 20 hours. Uh, Josh Agundale, big man Josh Agundale, has announced that he is departing from Iowa. In a statement released via Twitter, Josh said as follows, Dear Hawkeye Nation, I'm grateful to have had the opportunity to be a part of two incredible teams at the University of Iowa. I want to thank my teammates and coaches for the special bonds and memories, which I will take with me forever. However, I believe it is in my best interest to enter the transfer portal and continue to chase my dreams. Now, I want to add this. Um, the University of Iowa uh, has released very positive statements about Joe Toussaint and Josh Agundale. Why wouldn't you? Um, specifically, Coach McCaffrey wishing both of those guys the best. And uh, I know there wasn't much of a, a statement released with C.J. Frederick last year. I think uh, most Iowa fans probably know why that was. But the point is, Josh leaves on great great terms. Joe leaves on great terms. Both those guys worked hard. Josh didn't see the floor nearly as much. And for those of you that say that, you say that Josh should have seen the floor more, I, I don't know if that's the case. I know Philip Abracha struggled at times. I've said this before on the air. I think he's playing out of position. Some people respond and say, well, he's not a good enough shooter to play at the four. Well, that you can make that case, but I do think he's a better shooter than he than he showed this year, and I'd like to see him get some run at the four. But Josh, I think health was a factor here. Uh, we know he, uh, at least we suspect that he had COVID once he got here. Remember, it took forever for Josh Agundale to get to the U.S. Um, originally from the U.K., finally got here during the COVID issues. He finally was able to get here, got sick. I believe it was COVID. My understanding is it was COVID. Um, then tried to lose weight, struggled to get weight off. I think he finally did. And then at the beginning of this season, he looked trimmed. And then I've had people tell me that they thought he gained weight throughout the season. Now, I can't validate that. I'm not going to speculate on it any further. Um, but the bottom line is I think Josh um, dealt with some health issues. was also told that he had been sick this season. So I feel bad for Josh Agundale. Um, this, again, you, I, I don't think it's fair to anybody to blame somebody for Josh Agundale leaving. Um, you know, when we, he, he was in the game, I think he certainly provided an impact. We saw that against Purdue in the Big Ten championship game we saw him bang in west lafayette against uh, the boilermakers back what was that in december we even saw him bang with kofi coburn um a year ago in the big 10 championship game when luca garza got in foul trouble against the illini so uh, josh agundale has some of the physical traits you know he's 6 11 big body i hope he he gets a power five uh, chance I, I i don't know if that will happen or not physically he's got an opportunity to play at that level and that's why I was excited when he committed to Iowa. I thought they could groom him into a, a physical type. I know people had kind of compared him to Zach Randolph. I don't know that he's got the shooting touch for that. We've really not seen him shoot. We just haven't seen him on the floor very much. So wherever Josh goes, you hope he gets an opportunity. You hope his health condition or his health situation can remain stable and he can remain healthy and have an opportunity. Remember, the COVID year did not count. So technically he'll be a red shirt sophomore next year so he's got three years he's got three years um i believe the rule is if he were to get hurt we don't want that to happen but if he were to get hurt my understanding is that he could take an extra year last year did not count so another red shirt year he could technically be in college for four more years but he's got three years more to play right four years to play three and um so best wishes to Josh Agundale. We had him, I had him on the podcast. Uh, this is probably, oh, it was before he got here, right after he got here. So a couple of years back, very soft-spoken kid. Everybody talked about how he's kind of a jokester. Um, but, uh, you know, I talked about Joe Toussaint on the earlier video. Guy always had good body language. I never seen, I never saw a bad body language at a, at a Josh Agundale. Always is a guy on the bench that was cheering for his teammates. And when he, when he got in the game, 
he did make a difference. So best of wishes to jo uh, Joshua Gundelay. Now, one thing uh, about these two departures, specifically Toussaint and Agundelay, and I talked a little bit about it with Toussaint, with, with DeSante Bowen coming in and Tony Perkins and Aaron Ulis. But what does this mean now for Iowa's roster moving forward, specifically at the five? Because Josh is a true five. I, I saw was it verbal commits on Twitter listed him as a forward slash center. He's a center. I mean, if there's anything, if there's anyone who's a true five, it's Josh Agundale. Um, Where does Iowa turn to now without the depth that they had? Remember, they do have Riley Mulvey. He'll be a year older. He should have been in high school last year, reclassified. He'll be a year older. Would expect him to take a jump. We'll see. But would expect him to take a jump. You do have Philip Rabracci coming back, who started all season at the five, even though I think he'd benefit from playing at the four. Iowa is in the portal right now. Fardaz Amak is a guy who uh, is apparently being looked at very hard by Iowa. Um, was told that he um, potentially had some contact. Won't go into further depth on that, but uh, was told that he had some contact with Iowa here uh, a couple days ago. And he's got an opportunity. If he wants to come to Iowa, he's going to play right away. Uh, the guy led Division One rebounding last year. I'm going to talk about him on a future video. So, um Hang tight on that. We, I will get to that. But here is the latest report on AMAC. Um, according to Austin Massey, who is a uh, 247 reporter for um, Texas Tech, for Texas Tech, uh, they, he did have a, AMAC had a Zoom call with Texas Tech uh, yesterday. So uh, that uh, th that is interesting. Texas Tech, obviously a player in March. They've been a much more consistent team in the NCAA tournament as far as teams who are high on Fardaw's list Iowa from what it sounds like is in the top five right now um, and that's, that's certainly encouraging because this is a guy who's considered by many to be the number one center in the transfer portal he led division one in rebounding last year he averaged 14 a game the only guy that averaged more than him this year was Oscar Shibwe from Kentucky who by the way is also in on um, in on Fardaw's very hard so again I'm gonna talk about him on a future video but if you can get a guy from the portal, and it may not be Fardos, maybe it's someone else. Um, I know there's a couple different connections. You got the kid from Northwestern uh, who has played Ryan Young. He's played at the Big Ten level. I know Fran has been critical of players jumping within the conference. So would he even be willing to do that? I, I don't know. Um, I think that's that's certainly a question mark. Um, but certainly Ryan Young is seasoned, knows how to play in the Big Ten. I don't think that'd be a bad option. A um, couple other options that I can tell you are in the portal right now. Manny Bates from North Carolina State averaged uh, 10.6 boards, three blocks during his sophomore year, missed all but one game of his junior year. He's 6'11", big guy, good shot blocker. I would think he could be a, an option as well. Um, and there, I mean, there's a, a number of them. Trey James from Iona, he's a kid that had an offer from Iowa out of high school. He is in the portal now out of Iona, so... Uh, he's looking for a home, and uh, there are several others, other big men there, and they're going to continue to jump into the portal. The portal's as active as it has ever been, kind of like with the whole football conversations that we've had over recent months. So Fran's going to have an opportunity. I think he needs to go out and get a big man. I think he needs to go out and get a three-point shooter. I've been saying that for months, even before the Tucson, Agundale, and Keegan news. A big man and a three-point shooter to me should be the, the biggest priorities. They've got Ulis and DeSante Bowen coming in to play the point. I think Tony Perkins potentially could play some point as well at times. But if you can get somebody to play the two, that's the key. Because then that would release Perkins to be able to play some point if Fran McCaffrey wants him to, to play some point. Because Josh Dix, is he going to be healthy? Is he not going to be healthy? We don't know. You know, Sanford's more like a, a three at six seven. Good three-point shooter. Chris Murray will be back. Patrick is going to be more of a three. I think a three-point shooter in a center, but we'll talk about it more on a live show. So subscribe to this channel. Please click the bell, turn notifications on, because when I go live, you'll know about it right here from the Hawkeye of the Storm.